Hi, my name is Dr. Joe Childs. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. And on this video today, I'm going to talk to you about migraine headaches. We're going to go over our migraine uh, relief program. We're going to talk to you about how we help patients overcome migraines they thought they were going to have to live with their whole life. We've helped a tremendous amount of patients with migraines, and uh, we, so we treat it very successfully. So let's tell you a little bit about my, myself before we get into talking about migraines and how we treat them without drugs and without surgery. Again, I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist, and what a chiropractic neurologist is, just like in medicine, there are medical neurologists, and you can specialize in orthopedics and things like that. In chiropractic, you can also specialize. And so I chose to specialize beyond my chiropractic education, have further education in the field of chiropractic neurology or functional neurology. The difference between chiropractic neurology or functional neurology and medical neurology is that unlike um, medicine, we don't treat with drugs and surgery. Medicine basically treats with medications or drugs and things like that where we treat with specific uh, nutritional care and specific metabolic protocols and we also treat with specific types of neurological stimulations. We're going to talk about that pretty heavily on this video today so you can understand what your treatment options are. The other thing about me is I'm getting fellowship trained in functional neurology which is drugless neurology. I'm fellowship trained in child neurodevelopmental disorders so uh, not only do we see a lot of chronic conditions like migraines and things like that, we see a lot of kids with uh, ADD and ADHD and Asperger's syndrome, things like that. Um, uh, trained in functional nutrition, which again is uh, nutritional care without medications or drugs. Uh, I'm also trained in blood chemistry and I'm also trained in spinal decompression therapy and spinal biomechanics. Uh, prior to me getting into chiropractic, uh, which has uh, been in practice now in Downingtown now for the last 12 years, I was an exercise physiologist. So that's a little bit about me. So what makes us different than every other doctor you've seen for migraines? Now the people that come in and see us, very it's, it's typical when patients come in, they've been to multiple doctors. They, you know, they've, most people come and see us, they've been to like five, six, seven, eight different doctors. They've been to all these special clinics to find out why they have migraines. And usually they have not been treated successfully. So what makes us different than every doctor you've seen? Well, we treat migraine headaches metabolically and neurologically. Now what does that mean? Well, that means we treat the brain, we treat the central nervous system, and see a chiropractic neurologist, or also known as a functional neurologist, is a lot different than a regular chiropractor. Migraine patients are very sensitive, and a lot of migraine patients have told me that they've been the chiro regular chiropractic and they've had uh, the osseous adjusting in the neck and then they've actually gotten worse. See chiropractic neurology we take into account your metabolic capacity, what you can take and we can do a very specific neurological exam. I'm going to go over that uh, further in this video but our care is a little more gentle and it's neurologic based. We treat the brain and we treat you also metabolically which means we look at your function from the inside. We're going to look at blood panels, we're going to look at different types of tests which I'm going to talk about as we go. So we're going to get to the root cause of why you have migraines. You know, if you're watching this DVD, either you or a loved one is dealing with migraine headaches and you're looking for some answers, you've tried everything typically or you wouldn't be watching this DVD, okay? So if you have these types of problems, we really have to think outside the box, outside the medical standard of care, outside of what your insurance is only going to pay for. We have to look for the things that are going to get you well, things that other doctors have not looked for. So we're going to leave no stone unturned in discovering the reason why you have these headaches. Okay. Now, migraines are neurological. It's a neurological problem. It's the way the nervous system is affecting the blood vessels in your head. Your brain requires two things to function properly. It requires two things to survive. It requires fuel. Fuel is in the form of glucose and it's also in the form of oxygen. That's our metabolic side. And then activation is the specific stimulation that the brain needs. Patients with migraine headaches have parts of their brain that are understimulated, underdeveloped. They have other parts of their brains that are firing way too fast. And so we need to do proper activation to get certain parts of your brain firing better. So fuel and activation. So again, well, that brings us back to we treat migraines metabolically and neurologically. Metabolically is the fuel and neurologically is the activation that we're going to talk about. On this video, we have, I, I broke it up into two parts. The first part, which I'm going to talk about right now, is all of the metabolic implications or all the medical, metabolic aspects to getting a patient better with migraines. 
On the second part of this video, uh, which I filmed at another time, what's going to happen is you're going to you'll watch that. I'm going to go over the causes of migraines from a neurological perspective, and I'm also going to go over the specific types of neurological care that we do to help patients with migraines. We're going to have you understand exactly why you have migraine headaches in the second video. So this video we're going to talk about metabolic care. So when a patient comes in with, with uh, migraine headaches in their oral office, we're going to run a complete metabolic panel, we're going to run a lipid panel, we're going to need to run a complete blood count with auto differential which is going to separate out the red and the white blood cells. We're going to run a thyroid panel, we're going to run thyroid antibodies, we're going to run TPO antibodies and TBG antibodies. We're going to run a very broad metabolic panel. Now it always comes up at this point but Dr. Childs, I've already had these tests and they're normal according to your medical doctor. Now here's the thing, lab ranges are inaccurate. When, you're, when your medical doctor you know, sends you out for blood work and on the one side you have all of the ranges that you are, on the other side you have the ranges that you should be, well that's looking at what's called the laboratory range, the laboratory values. The laboratory values come from, most people don't even know where that reference range comes from, I'm going to tell you right now, it comes from all of the people giving blood in this country. So when you go and you give blood and you sit down and you look at the people giving blood, those people are usually, the high percentage of them, are very unhealthy people. So they look at the average of everybody giving blood. So that's very broad. It's very inaccurate. And, and you know, you're not going to be healthy if you're just trying to stay within those lab ranges. We use what's called the functional lab values. And what the functional lab values are the optimal ranges. And so it's very important to understand this. In fact, you can go to our uh, website, www.sdrchildsdrder.com, and we have a whole video on the difference between the laboratory ranges and the functional ranges. But the functional ranges are optimal ranges, and that's the average of all the people that don't have symptoms, all the people that are completely healthy. And that's what we want you to be in. So if you're going to get rid of your migraines, you've got to be real tight with that. Okay? So again, this is why you can go to your medical doctor and they'll say everything is normal with your lab values, but you still don't feel good. You still have migraines. You still have some type of chronic health problem. Okay, so we've got to be a little more specific. I'll give you an example. Glucose, the functional range for glucose, the optimal range is 85 to 100. The laboratory range, or a much broader range, the one that you would look at when you, a medical doctor would look at, is 65 to 110. That means you could be at 109 or 110 and you're not really considered hyperglycemia or too much insulin or too much blood sugar. But do you understand that's we have to look at it tighter. Or you could be 65 or 66, that's what we consider a reactive hypoglycemia, which could totally cause you to have headaches. It can spur along your headaches big time. But in a medical, a medical value, that's going to look normal. But from a functional range, looking at a doctor that does integrative medicine, that's not going to be normal. We need to get that in tighter, in tighter uh, values. Okay? So uh, metabolic care, the other thing we're going to run is we're going to run an adrenal stress index. Patients with migraine headaches, their adrenals are usually shot. They're usually fatigued. The adrenals are the stress glands that sit right above your kidneys. And they secrete cortisol, they secrete epinephrine, they secrete what's called catecholamines and things like that. And so we can run this salivary index, which will let us know how your cortisol levels are, are rising or the values of your cortisol cortisol levels in the morning, in the middle of the day, at night, and there's a certain range that they need to be at. So some patients have too much cortisol, some patients have too little cortisol, and that really affects their blood uh, sugars quite a bit, and it can cause insomnia, it can cause a person that wakes up in the middle of the night, it can cause migraine headaches. So this test is a must if you have migraine uh, headaches. Uh, again, adrenal stress index, essential for patients with migraines. Uh, it basically comes out like this. We're going to get a complete circadian rhythm of your cortisol profile. We're going to look at your cortisol burden. We're going to look at DHEA. We're going to look at all these different hormones and all of these, uh, which are you know, cortisol hormones and different hormones that your adrenal glands secrete. And we're going to get an idea of what's going on uh, with your internal environment of your body. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is sensitivity testing. Sensitivity testing, again, is essential. What we do with sensitivity testing is we test the big five, gluten, casein, egg, soy, and yeast. Patients with migraines almost always have a sensitivity to one of these foods. Okay, Gluten, casein, soy. Gluten is one of the big ones. In fact, there have been studies, lots of studies, on patients with migraines. In, in a lot of cases, 
they are gluten sensitive, which creates inflammation in their brain. So we want to we want to run the test here. Okay. Now, how do we know if we if you have food sensitivities? Well, most of the time, patients have really no symptoms at all. You don't have to have gut problems. But if you are a person with chronic pain or fatigue, chronic indigestion, fullness after meals, bloating after meals, frequent loose bowel uh, stools, constipation, vomit often, mouth ulcers, things like that, then you definitely get, need to run the test. But you could just have migraines or you could have fatigue and it's due to a food sensitivity. The trouble with the food sensitivities is your immune system reacts to these foods and it creates what's called an autoimmune problem. And we'll talk about that more in detail when we talk about the autoimmune test that we need to do. We run an intestinal permeability test. It's called a leaky gut syndrome test. A lot of patients, and this is tied right into the food sensitivities, but a lot of patients with migraines and other chronic conditions have a leaky gut. Now your gut wall is supposed to do uh, one thing. It's supposed to separate the internal environment of your gut, which is really the external world, to the inside of your blood vessel. So basically when you have a wall, uh, the, the, your gut wall, you've got the blood on one side, on the other side you have where the food is coming through. Now the only thing that should get through the gut is highly digested foods or, or foods that have been digested down to amino acids and, and the smallest constituents that they can be broken down to. And so if protein comes down, it needs to be broken down from protein to peptides to amino acids. And the only thing that should th slide through that gut is the small, uh, the small particles. What will happen is if your gut is leaky, kind of like a screen door, a screen door is only supposed to allow air in and keep the bugs out. But if you've got holes in your screen door, what will happen is now bugs can get in. And that's kind of the same thing that happens with a leaky gut. The gut becomes more permeable, and now you get whole protein molecules, you get peptides that get through into your bloodstream. Now when they get into your bloodstream, what occurs is your immune system, which is supposed to be looking for bacteria and viruses and cancer cells and things like that, which are proteins themselves or, or peptides, thinks that the food is, or the, whatever it goes through there, whether it's a gluten protein or whether it's casein protein, it's foods that aren't fully digested to get through that leaky gut, your immune system reacts and it attacks the, those molecules and it creates inflammation. And that inflammation can eventually cause brain inflammation which a lot of patients with migraines have brain inflammation. It can cause autoimmune disorders and it can cause a whole host of things. So we've got to check you for a leaky gut. We can do a test for that. Migraines can, can be caused by an autoimmune disorder. We just talked about autoimmune means your own immune system is attacking itself. So if your immune system is continually attacking these foreign protein molecules, now these protein molecules are considered what's called antigens. An antigen is a protein molecule that your immune system attacks. So let's say you continually eat gluten and you're sensitive to gluten, which we can tell by running the test. If you're sensitive to gluten, then that's an antigen. And that antigen will then cause an immune reaction. And eventually the immune system starts to get tilted in the wrong direction and it starts to attack itself. So autoimmune means your own immune system is attacking your own body. And, uh, and uh, patients with migraines can have an autoimmune reaction going on an underlying autoimmune reaction. See, in medicine, they only treat autoimmune diseases if they're a named autoimmune disease, like if you have rheumatoid arthritis or you have lupus or you have something like that, or Sjogren's syndrome, okay? So that's an autoimmune reaction. Now, I want you to understand that antigens can cause that. Gluten sensitivity is a big one, milk sensitivity. But Dr. Childs, I've already been tested for gluten sensitivity. My doctor did a celiac test and it came back negative. Well, here's the thing. The celiac test, the typical celiac test that is paid for by your insurance and run by most medical doctors is only sensitive enough to pick up celiac. Celiac disease is a genetic, a very strong, powerful genetic sensitivity to gluten. Patients can have gluten sensitivity and not have celiac. So the test that we run, which is a stool test, looks for gluten sensitivity and it's not celiac, meaning it's more sensitive, meaning you can be negative for the, the one that your medical doctor runs, but positive for this one. If you're positive, you need to get off of the foods that you're sensitive to, and it could be any, any number of these foods. We have to look, okay? That creates an autoimmune disorder. Now, the immune panels are essential. They trump everything. If you have autoimmune, you have, you, we have to fix that, or everything else is going to be awry. The immune panels, we run TMB lymphocytes. We run cytokine panels, which are your interleukins, your interleukin-2s, your interleukin-4s, your TNF-alpha, 
natural killer cell activity. We have to run these tests. Uh, there's two parts of your immune system. You have Th1 on one side and Th2 on, on the other side. Th1 is interleukin-2 and, interleukin and TNF-alpha. Those are the cytokines or the inflammatory mediators that are brought about by Th1. Th1 is your T cells. The T cells is the part of your immune system that goes out and does the attacking if there's an antigen. So if there's gluten, if there's virus, if there's bacteria, it's the warrior that goes out and kills the, the, um, the antigen. Okay, or the invader. Th2 are your B cells. We can measure T your B cells or your Th2 by measuring interleukin-4 or interleukin-10, which are your cytokines or your inflammatory mediators. Your B cells, your B cells do not go out and do the killing. They create the antibodies to, to, to tag and mark what needs to be killed for the future. You can have an imbalance between Th1 and Th2 brought about by uh, an autoimmune disorder. That's the definition of an autoimmune disorder. So when we test you, we can test and see are you Th1 or Th2 dominant? And that could be part of the reason why you have migraine headaches. It could be the only reason why you have migraine headaches. We have to find out if you have an active antigen or do you have immune dysregulation. An active antigen means that you have something in your body that your body's trying to kill. It could be a parasite, it could be bacteria, viruses, molds, yeast, fungi, protozoans. It could be foods, gluten, casein some type of food you're sensitive to, or it can be a heavy metal like mercury or lead or something of that. We need to test to find that out. Immune dysregulation means that you have autoimmunity because something else in your body is not functioning well. It means that you've got blood sugars that are really high or really low, or you have adrenals that are really high or really low, or you have anemia. Anemia means that your, your, your body can't get enough, uh, you don't have enough red blood cells, you don't have enough uh, hemoglobin, so you're not carrying oxygen very well. Okay. We can tell if you have an active antigen by looking at what's called the CD4-CD8 ratio, which is the helper-suppressor ratio. If it's above 2.5, you have an active antigen, which means you've got a lot more CD4s, you have a lot more helpers. Helpers go out and, and create the inflammation. If it's below 2.0, then you have immune dysregulation, probably secondary to some other metabolic problem that your doctor has not uncovered. Okay, you have to understand that. The reason why you're watching this video right now is because you've not been helped. Okay, and if you've not been helped, or you've come to our office. The reason why people come to our office typically is they've, they, they've not been helped by the traditional standard of care. So we need to run these tests. We can run something called a DNA stool ecology profile, which is to determine your gut composition by testing DNA. It's going to let us know, do you have any parasites? Do you have dysbiosis, which means a lot of people who have taken a lot of antibiotics, they get a lot of yeast built up and not enough uh, healthy bacteria in their intestines. Okay, so we can run that. That's a stool test. We can test you for H. pylori. H. pylori is a upper GI uh, bacterial infection. We can test you for inflammation, which is C-reactive protein and homocysteine. Patients with autoimmune usually will have these up. We can run neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are like serotonin, GABA. We can test your dopamine. We can get an idea. We can do some screenings to find out what type of neurotransmitter support you need. That may be essential for your migraines. We can run hormone panels. We can run female hormone panels. We can run postmenopausal, premenopausal female hormone panels. But I'll tell you, the hormone panels only, uh, if you have a problem with your hormone panel, the way we fix that is by fixing your adrenals, by fixing your blood sugar, by fixing the autoimmunity. So in and of itself, it's not like we're going to look at the hormone panel and say, we got to do something to alter your hormones. What we need to do is get your metabolism functioning better, your insides working better, and then your hormones are going to be better. Does that make sense to you? So uh, the hormone panels are not the end all. Okay. Glutathione. So once we find out uh, what's going on, what you're sensitive to, we find out what your blood sugars look like, we, we find out what your thyroid looks like. We've run an extensive thyroid panel, not just with TSH. We're going to run thyroid antibodies. We're going to run free T3. We're going to look at... Uh, free T3, uh, T4, we're going to look at uh, T3 uptake, we're going to look at all these things and then we're going to put you on a specific nutritional protocol of supplements and nutrition to get your nerve, to get, to get your metabolic system functioning better. So we're not going to give you any drugs to get this normal. We're going to put you on a specific type of diet that's going to be perfect for you for your particular problem and your headaches based on your chemistry, not just based on, hey, try this supplement because we think it's good for you. Okay. So that's important to understand. We also use glutathione. Glutathione is very important. It's the mother load of all antioxidants. So most of our patients with chronic conditions, they need to get on some glutathione. Glutathione really helps your, uh, protect your body from uh, oxidation. So that's basically what we do meta metabolically. Now the question is, have you had all these tests performed? Did, have you had doctors perform these tests? And the answer is no. 
The reason why uh, your answer is no is because most doctors, unless they think sort of outside the box, they only use the, the very narrow medical standard of care. Now what do I mean by that? They're only going to do this certain testing for patients with migraines. The standard of care is try this drug, try that drug, try this drug, take Imitrex. That's basically what they do. Okay. Even though there's tremendous amounts of research, see insurances want to keep this standard of care outside the standard because they don't have to pay for it. So you have to understand that there are things outside that standard of care which can help you and there's tremendous amounts of research behind it but before it gets into the standard of care it's going to take you 20-30 years before it gets into the standard of care and that's the reason why your medical doctor has not run these tests because again it's not considered the quote unquote standard of care but here's the question you've had migraine headaches for how long right you've had them for let's say 15 years 10 years have they been changed has anybody corrected the problem no then you need to think outside the box okay well doctor Charles can't my medical doctor run these tests for me no your medical doctor can't run the test because he would have already run them already does that make sense? Your medical doctor would have already run the test already. And it's not like he's holding back and he knows all this information and he'd run it, he's going to run them eventually. No. He doesn't know this information. This, we have to take special courses, uh, weekend courses. Two weekends a month we're, we're out of town to learn this information. This is cutting edge, cutting edge information in helping patients with chronic conditions. So that's the metabolic side. We need to run those tests. Now what I want to talk about is the neurological treatments based on specific neurological testing. That's going to be a separate video. It's going to start here in just a minute. And uh, we're going to talk about the types of headaches that you can have and what our neurological protocols are. So thank you.